If there is one type of lens that has truly changed the way I approach gigs as a videographer and photographer, it would have to be a wide-angle zoom. And so in this video, we're going to talk about not just any wide-angle zoom, but more specifically the 16-35mm f2.8 G Master, my long-term experience with using the lens overall, and whether I think this is something you should still consider for your kit even today. So to cover this lens's specs and features, this is a fixed aperture f2.8 lens that covers the focal range of 16 to 35 millimeters. The lens measures in at around three and a half inches in diameter and four and seven eighths inches going from front to back. And this lens weighs in at around 24 ounces or 680 grams. So certainly not the lightest lens you're going to find in the Sony ecosystem, but still relatively light in the broader category of a fast aperture wide angle zoom. The lens features 11 aperture blades, an aperture range going from f2.8 to f22. The 16 to 35 millimeter is also, yes, dust and moisture resistant, has an 82 millimeter front filter thread for adapting different filters and step up rings, has a minimum focusing distance of around 0.28 meters or roughly 11 inches, give or take. And while released in 2017, and therefore not the latest and greatest of Sony's autofocus tech, the lens contains two direct drive autofocus motors, and overall results in a very both quick and quiet autofocus experience when using it with any of Sony's latest cameras. Now in terms of its physical design and features, I would say this lens bears a striking resemblance to the original 24-70 G Master, which I've also done a review on this channel that I believe link to above and in the description below that you can check out. Overall, you have an autofocus to manual focus toggle switch, that can be easily adjusted along the side of the lens, as well as a single programmable button that by default in Sony's cameras is used for focus hold. You have a main zoom ring of the lens with, yes, a barrel that extends outward as you go from 35 millimeters at its base to 16 millimeters at the wide end. And you have a manual focus ring that can be controlled if and when desired. Like essentially all of Sony's G Master lenses, the 16 to 35 comes with its own lens hood, both front and rear Sony lens caps, and a padded soft case to protect the lens. So to get back to a previous question, what makes the 16 to 35 millimeter focal length stand out to me? How is this lens useful on a variety of different gigs? And what makes it something you might want to consider as well? Well, first and foremost, if you're someone that shoots real estate, whether on the photo or video side, a 16 to 35 millimeter is likely going to be a mainstay in your kit throughout its lifetime. Now I could go on to extol the many virtues of using a 16 to 35 for real estate. However, I have an entirely separate video on real estate photography that specifically talks Talks about the 16 to 35 that I will leave a link to above and in the description below that you can check out. Needless to say, there's not going to be many focal lenses that will cover this kind of gig properly. And while there are a number of prime lenses that could technically do the job, they will not provide the versatility and flexibility that a 16 to 35 would. And furthermore, lenses like a 16 to 35 allow you to still use filters and step up rings adapted to the front of your lens versus say something like a 12 to 24 with a convex lens design that will require you to use more obtuse drop-in filters or other types of solutions. But real estate or even relatedly architecture or landscape work are sort of known common use cases for a 16 to 35. So what about some other different ones that are less common? In my case, another particularly useful scenario for this type of lens has actually been concert videography. Yes, I have a number of different concert videography related videos on the channel, and each of these has likely talked about in some form or fashion the value of when you're filming in smaller, tighter venues and you are quote unquote hugging the stage, having the ability to get broadly encompassing wide angle shots is going to be clutch. Overall, it is lenses like my 20mm G and yes, of course, the 16 to 35mm G Master that have been able to historically provide me with the proper field of view that can capture everyone on the stage, all the different surrounding instruments, while still being able to frame out the environment appropriately. But if there's one type of gig I do a lot of, it is weddings. And yes, this lens certainly has a home in being able to do different types of wedding work. Whether it's a scenario of just needing a good, safe, wide angle shot for events like the wedding reception, where you just want a good safety angle that you don't have to worry about. And this is particularly true as a solo shooter wedding videographer that often does video coverage with multi-camera setups just on my own. Or quite frankly, for cameras like the a7 IV that say in 4K 60 mode, do an APS-C crop to provide a 1.5 times field of view. It is a lens like the 16 to 35 that would then take on the focal length of roughly a 24 to 52.5 and provide a different, but perhaps even more unique and versatile field of view for that type of situation. But of course, another area we haven't even even talked about where I've used this lens considerably is, yes, for YouTube. Yes, for the past year or two, for the vast majority of shots you've seen taken at this desk and this particular setup, these have been filmed with the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master. So having the ability to go wide, to make a small space feel that much larger, 
and to be able to do so with a bit of flexibility and the focal length you're capturing is something that really only a wide angle zoom like the 16 to 35 G Master can provide. But of course the 16 to 35 G Master has a number of other different characteristics we should talk about as well. Now in terms of overall lens sharpness, I did a full comparison of the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master version one versus its newer version two in a separate video on my channel that I will leave a link to above and in the description below that you can check out. And while I would highly encourage you to check out this comparison because it goes into a lot more detail than I would even be able to cover here. Needless to say, the 16 to 35 G Master is very sharp both at the center and the corners throughout its aperture range, while also displaying a moderately expected amount of barrel distortion and really not much chromatic aberration to speak of, at least in evaluating some sample images. Now in the realm of focus breathing, the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master does exhibit some of this, but again, bear in mind, most of Sony's newer cameras now have breathing compensation built in. And in the many different times I've used this lens, I would say I've never noticed any visible signs of focus breathing, even when using autofocus, nor has it thrown off any crucial shots. So it's not something I would particularly worry about. Now within the realm of bokeh, almost every G Master produces very nice spherical bokeh balls. And yes, the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master is no exception to this. Now within the realm of autofocus performance, yes, even though this is an older G Master lens, I would say performance here is still easily well on par, if not above many of Sony's other G and G Master lenses. This lens can easily keep up with Sony's newer bodies, such as the a7R5 using its more advanced AI autofocus system. And of course, if we're talking about overall image quality, I would think through the different examples I've shown already, and now that you're seeing on screen, this lens largely speaks for itself. But of course, the 60 and 35 millimeter G Master is far from the only option here when it comes to wide angle zooms for Sony E-mount. So we should talk about price and some of the other options that exist out there. So at the time of recording this video, the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master typically retails for around $1,900 US. And I would not be surprised in time for that number to go down much as the original 24 to 70 and 70 to 200 G Masters have also done within their lifespan after being replaced. And while this is still considerably cheaper than the now newer 16 to 35 millimeter F 2.8 G Master version two, the present price of the version one is still well above many other 16 to 35 options from Sony. That includes the newer 16 to 35 millimeter F4 power zoom lens, the legacy 16 to 35 millimeter F4 Zeiss lens, third party options like the Tamron 17 to 28 F2.8, so on and so forth. And though these might be even half or less or a fraction of the cost of the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master, it is probably worth considering what you actually want or need out of a lens like this. So overall, what do I think of the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master? And is this a lens that still holds up even today? Still as the newest of the now oldest original trio of Sony G Master lenses, the 16 to 35 perhaps more than any other lens in that trio still holds its own. If you're looking for a simple and solid wide angle zoom that provides great image quality and has nearly all of the essential features and characteristics you would want of a lens like this, it's still really hard to think of anything better than the original 16 to 35 millimeter G Master. I would not be surprised if most folks that own a version 1 16 to 35 don't even bother upgrading to the version 2, given the overall minor range of differences between them and the fact that the version 1 still performs so well. Now, whether you need f2.8 versus, say, f4, or you prefer other functionality like a power zoom versus a more mechanical zoom functionality, these are all decisions you'll have to make and decide on your own. All in all, if you're looking for a wide angle zoom in the Sony E mount system, I still think the 16 to 35 millimeter original G Master should be on and perhaps at the top of your list. So that is my take on the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master. Now, hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have a number of lens reviews and related content on the channel that I would definitely encourage you to check out. And yes, there will be much more on the way. For now, that is all I have to say. So thanks for watching.